Thank you very much, and thank you to the, all the organizers. I know from experience that it's a lot of work preparing such kind of uh, meeting. Okay, this is a joint work with uh, Aurélien Deya from my institute, and I mentioned that he's going to appear in a functional, a functional analysis. Uh, it already appeared in, a, in the last issue, maybe, in the, in the issue from uh, uh, August uh, this year. Now, uh, as you could, could imagine, the, the, the idea is to adapt uh, the, the theory of four paths in a non-commutative probability setting. The, the, the theory of four paths has been developed uh, during, the 90, during the, 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 the 90s by Thierry Lyons uh, in order to extend the study of some uh, stochastic processes under some uh, under regu regularity. Now, the, the idea is to show the flexibility of such, cat, such kind of machinery. And the, the idea is also to provide uh, maybe another perspective of non-commutative stochastic uh, analysis for this. And the reference for this will be, uh, our point of view, the people by Bian and Speicher. The people, uh, the people by Bian and Speicher uh, concerns the free probability, uh, the free born in motion, and the corresponding uh, stochastic uh, calculus. And uh, another reference is the work of Bojeku, Kummerer, and Speicher. Uh, and this work concerns the Q Gaussian uh, processes, etc. Now the uh, what we're going to do is to, to see if, with the extension of, of the raw path theory, we could uh, uh, prove again, in, in, maybe in a, in a simpler way, results contained in, in these two papers, and uh, maybe generalize uh, the, the, the approach on this here. Now, uh, in terms of outline, uh, I will do some some such kind of uh, raw introduction to raw paths. Okay, there's no time. Raw introduction to, to raw paths, etc. And then you will see uh, uh, what's going on in a non probability uh, theory setting for the raw paths uh, for this on here. Okay, for the basic um, classical raw paths theory, you have uh, uh, this depends heav heavily on the, on, the, on the coefficients and on some functions, which is called the, the, the Young case. What I'm going to, to present you is not exactly the, the, uh, the method developed by uh, Thierry Lyons. Uh, I'm going to follow the, the, the approach developed uh, by Gubinelli. Gubinelli uh, wanted to understand the raw path theory, uh, which is from a mathematical point of view, we have to confess that it's not so rigorous uh, as necessary. And Gubinelli provided an algebraic approach to the raw path. He wanted to understand his argument and his algebraic, and he came up with a specific uh, algebraic uh, framework, introduced a, a topology uh, which, which we're going to, to use also in this context. Uh, and this, uh, this approach is more suited to what I'm going to, to explain you. The raw path theory depends on the, uh, what does it mean, the raw path theory? Here's a summary of it. You have a non-differential path. This is the thing. Non-differential path. You insist on this, from 0t to Rn. And, but you have some holder regularity on this uh, uh, non-differential path. It's meaning that this norm here is less than t minus s to the, to the uh, power gamma. And gamma is uh, some... Uh, uh, number between 0 and 1, etc. Now, the question is, given a smooth function, from Rn into uh, this, then how can we define this quantity here, this uh, stochastic interval, knowing that from the beginning the, the, the x is non-differentiable itself? And in, in the context of raw paths, you will also to, uh, to define, uh, have a definition which, which may uh, allows you to cover some differential equations. You see, you have a classical differential equations and you have the x here, but the x is non-differentiable in this context here. 
This means this is clearly an extension of the classical uh, stochastic calculus in this context. Now, the row path theory is to give sense to such kind of stochastic interval. This does not make sense in a traditional context, knowing that this is a Hölder function, a gamma Hölder function, and the, the gamma is in the interval 0, 1. And the, uh, this has been designed by Thierry Lyons uh, as a pathwise approach to stochastic calculus. Yeah, yeah. And that is, so you don't consider that? No, they're not done. Just a function, in a, for just a function and a process which is non differentiable and so on. But you can solve, okay. Yeah, that's a, this was a, the initial. I'm just referring to, uh, to, to what uh, Thierry Lyons wanted to do. And, uh, so the theory was only for this yeah, kind of function? Yeah, yeah, you're right. And the, okay, now the, the construction provided by Thierry Lyons, and this appears also in, in the construction given by Gubinelli, the construction depends on, uh, the integral depends on gamma. For example, if gamma is larger than one half, if gamma is in this interval, this interval, and this interval. And according to this, you, you need uh, some additional uh, uh, construction. For example, for gamma less one or equal to, to one half, you need uh, additional assumptions on, the, on, the, on x, on the, on the process x. Now let's see what's going on for gamma larger than uh, one half. And for, for, for la gamma larger than one half, uh, the theory essentially refers to the, to the young, uh, this is called the young case, the, the, the young uh, theorem and so. uh, For those of you who attended uh, the several Q meetings, Abib Buerdian gave a lot of, uh, gave several talks involving young functions, etc. And I guess tomorrow, our chairman is going to use the young functions too in his talk. Okay, gives you a second chance to, uh, okay. This means if uh, x is a gamma holder and one is also a gamma, and if this, the sum of the indexes are larger than one half, then the Riemann sum here converges as a mesh of the, this is the partition here, tends to zero. And the, you define this integral here in the following way, the partitions. This is a basic uh, uh, theorem going back to, uh, to Young in 1936. Uh, okay, the application of this is you start the, uh, the, this process from zero then, this is a gamma holder, and in this context, gamma is larger than one half. F uh, in maybe a smooth function here, okay? Uh, and the application from, from t to f of x t is gamma holter, and then you define the, in, the young integral here, uh, which is in here. Okay, uh, now uh, another way to see the, the, young, the, 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 the young results, you write this quantity here, as you did in high school, you see, in the following way. There is a, 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 there's some, some uh, uh, partial integration formula here, going on here, there's, a, there's something. This means there's a, a main term here and some, some, uh, some additional term. The main term is, is in here, and uh, you have this uh, uh, upper bound here, because you has, have assumed uh, the, uh, that you have uh, this kind of, of uh, holder conditions. And then you have a this term here is, a we call it residual term, and if you check it under the assumption that I have already made, this residual term is upper bounded by C to T minus S to the 2 gamma. This means, uh, because 2 gamma in this context, 2 gamma is larger than, remember I have a gamma larger than 1 half, though 2 gamma is larger than 1, and this uh, residual term is going to disappear in the women sum, okay? Uh, because the index here is larger than the the, the, the gamma. This, uh, let me just remember that the, what I'm doing is just a rogue summary of, of uh, what's going on. And then, you see, you, you write this in the, in the following way, the definition given as, as follows. Then you use the, uh, the decomposition I have already here. This means in here you have a residual term, which is the, the sum over here. And uh, uh, just repeating the, the function, we say, there are some terms who are going to disappear 
in, in this context here. Okay? Now for, for gamma larger than one half, using uh, the young uh, theorem and what I told you, then you, you get something. What, what's going on for the, uh, if gamma is between uh, one third and one half? Um, if you assume that uh, X is in a uh, C gamma, C gamma, gamma process, you gamma uh, smaller than one half, uh, the, the trick is you cannot guarantee the convergence in general of such kind of quantity. In general, this does not make sense uh, if gamma is uh, smaller than one half. And the idea is to try to correct the Riemann sum because you cannot guarantee the convergence. You're going to add some, something uh, additional, some additional term, which I'm calling CTI and CTI uh, I plus one. Okay, because what you want, you want something which should finally be convergent, but it isn't convergent in, a, in, a, in this context here. Yeah. Now, you have to find out the, the, the function C. Uh, you need some, uh, some consideration. And assume that this quantity now, uh, you can define this, uh, this quantity here. Then you can define this quantity here can be written in, in this context here. And this, you can rewrite it in the following way. This is a Nabla operator, the, the, the gradient operator, and plus this additional term here. The, the, the YSU is just this quantity here, and because of the assumption I have, there is an upper bound of this quantity, which is also U minus S to the two gamma. Okay, now just continue the, and, and then also the, the idea is this quantity, if you integrate this quantity, you get something upper bounded by T minus S to the three gamma. And because three gamma is larger than that, this term also, this is an additional term, but it's going to disappear. This means the, it's not the main term of, of, uh, the, of the Riemann sum in, in here. Now, the, the, the main term is in, in, in this quantity in here. Now you, you write this, uh, this in here, and the function CST, I wanted to, to introduce here, I'm going to, to call it this quantity in here. This is, remember, this is the additional term I, I'm adding here. And the, the, this quantity here, you can rewrite it in the following term, this is just a partial derivative of it, of it. but in this context, uh, and then this is the same, you know, the same definition is just this quantity in here. And this, the quantity which appears in here, the additional term here, this is what uh, the reliance calls the Levy area process. You see, the Levy area process in here. Definition is, there's a, a formal definition of the Levy area in, in general. Itself. Now, this is basically the, the, the way the Levy area fits into the uh, uh, the theory of the reliance, okay? I have no time to develop all arguments uh, to make sure that everything is working, but this is the basic idea of uh, the row path theory, etc. You see, just the additional term appears as the uh, uh, Levy area theorem. Then, now we assume that the Levy area, if this term exists, it has a sense, if this, this exists, then, roughly speaking, everything is, is going to work. This means, Assume that the Levy area exists, then you can define the, the, this integral in here as the, 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 the limit of, of this, and this uh, uh, quantity here, remember, this is the Levy area in here. And then we can extend this definition to, the, uh, to an integral uh, Fy for a large class of paths uh, Y, and then you can also solve this uh, differential equation. Remember the process is, X is from the beginning not differentiable. So, and here is a summary of, of, a general summary of, of the theory. Then you can show that the solution, the solution of such kind of differential equation, even if the process is, X is not differentiable, is a continued function of this pair, X, the process X, and the Levy area. And this means that Y, the solution, uh, can be expressed in terms of phi, x, x squared, where phi is a continuous uh, uh, function in the whole, the whole topology. 
You see the, 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 the basic idea? The, uh, there is a Y function of, uh, uh, of this for the, for the general situation of uh, what's going on. Now, uh, if you have a, this means that, uh, roughly speaking, if you specialize this and if you're using the, the, the bone in motion in the, in the classical set, this means that the, uh, the process X, this means uh, the, the first integral dx and the second uh, integral dx dx, this means the Levy area in this context, are enough in order to capture the, the main uh, spirit of the, the behavior of y, etc. You see, the dynamic of, of your process is contained in a function of the, uh, depending only on x and the, uh, the Levy area of this. If you specialize to bone and moves. If not, so you get a functional, uh, as I told you before, you see, this functional here, the function phi uh, on the uh, quantity in here. And this uh, generalizes to, uh, uh, to this context. Now, the, the, coming to the main uh, question here, what's going on in a non-commutative uh, setting in here? Uh, for non-commutative process, here there is a question. This was uh, the beginning of uh, started with this question. What happens if, for the process, you replace the, this process uh, with, uh, uh, if you replace the, the, the gamma holder path here by this gamma helter path, and this is a is just a non-commutative uh, probability space. Okay, what's it's it's a, it's a, it's a completely natural question in, in this context. What's what happens? What's going on in this context? And okay, let me say something about the non-commutative processes of interest. And by the way, one of the motivations for doing that is, of course, when you specialize. The, the process, for, them, for example, for the free Brownian motion, there's a link between the free Brownian motion and uh, the, the free probabilities and the large random matrix theory, etc. With this approach, you can you get uh, new results concerning the uh, large random matrices. Additional results to the results proved by, uh, by, by uh, Guillaume, Benarus, and, and, uh, and the people, etc., because of the, of the approach, etc. And you can also uh, see the behavior of this kind of, of large matrices, even if uh, the, the, uh, the size of the matrix does not go for large n. For, for real applications in physics, uh, you know, you're mostly interested by large n, but n. If n goes to infinity, it's not really a physical meaning. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, and, and, and the link, this, this of course, goes back to Voiculescu uh, and, uh, and uh, see what's going on. Ha define the sequence of matrices in, in here. And these are the uh, uh, independent uh, standard Brownian motions, etc. You define the st and t, one of the square root of n, then almost surely, for, uh, for all T1, Tk, the trace of this process here, and ST1, N, ST, uh, STK, N, etc., uh, if N goes to infinity, this has a limit, and the limit involves the phi, remember the, you have a probability space, phi is a trace function, uh, and in this context, the, uh, the process, the corresponding process here is the free Brownian motion. In this context, but this is uh, just a specialization of, of what's going on. Just to tell you the uh, the link between uh, uh, this approach, etc., and uh, for, for what, what you can get is some uh, approximation of the trace for large n, and the limit is not necessary because of the of the the approximation in terms of uh, uh, the Levy area in here. Okay, this. Uh, I can pass rapidly, it's not, it's just to remind you the definition of, uh, uh, of what's going on in here. Now, from an uh, integration point of view, uh, what's going on? Uh, in the row pad, now the question, you can transfer the, the question to the following question. In the row pad machinery, what happens if you replace this quantity here by this holder pad, uh, where A is a non-commutative probability space, you know? Just repeating that I already told you. Of course, you can define uh, formally this in this way here. P is a polynomial. If P is a polynomial, this works. And the dot here refers to the product inside the, 
the probability space inside the algebra A is, is an algebra, you know, the product. This you can do for, 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 for polynomial, etc. Then you, you can apply in this context, if gamma is larger than one half, you can apply again Young theorem and give a sense, makes, this makes sense in this context uh, because of Young theorem. Remember, this is the multiplication inside the algebra A, etc. If gamma is in this interval, th then in, the, in, 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 uh, in, in Lyons theory, you have uh, such kind of uh, correcting term, remember, previously, and this correcting term, you, uh, you're going to relate it to a, a Levy area. Uh, now, in this context, uh, what about the C, the correcting term in here? Now, uh, in, in the finite dimensional uh, case, you have this quantity here. This writes in polynomial, et cetera, and you have formally uh, this quantity, and this you can write in, in here. And, and okay, because of the assumption, this is upper bounded by, by this quantity in here. Then if, uh, on the assumption, three gamma is larger than n, the main term, uh, the main term here is, again, this term here, and there's a correcting term in here. Now, a natural definition for this quantity is uh, similar to, to, the, to what's going on out of the fact that this is now the, uh, remember, the, the product inside the, the algebra A, etc. Remember that in the final definitions you had this quantity, you can rewrite it, and you have the uh, Levy area uh, process appears here. Uh, but in, in the non commutative case, this does not make sense anymore. It's not possible for anyone. This quantity here does not make sense here. This means, uh, in order to, to go forward, you have to find some quantity which plays the role of the Levy area. Uh, okay, there is work done on, uh, on this Levy area by Capitan and, and Donati in for the for the free bond in motion. Also by Victoire, and he came up with. Uh, with uh, conditions of existence and non-existence of the Levy area. And more recently, there is also work done by uh, Professor Hudson, uh, you can see the, in the proceedings of Levy coup uh, last year, he came up with a definition of a Levy area. Uh, he has a martingale construction of the, the Levy area in the non-commutative uh, setting. Okay? Now, you're looking for this quantity here. Now start for the, for example, for Px is a polynomial. It's just to, uh, to take an example, equal to x squared. Now you can write this in the following way. This writes in, in this way, an extension. This writes in, in this way, the same, the same meaning in here. Uh, this means that there's a, a quantity which appears in this uh, uh, expansion, which is this one here. This means for, for S smaller than N, uh, this quantity in here is going to play in, in, in this approach the role of a uh, uh, Levy area. This integral here, this is a dot from the inside the algebra, and this is again the dot inside the, the algebra. Now formally, um, we define the Levy area in the non-commutative setting probability case as being this quantity here. You know. It's different from, from the Levy area, of course, in the, in the classical case, but according to the expansion you get, it's, it's fairly easy to figure out in here, um, then you get this, uh, this quantity here, this writes as xs, and then uh, you have the Levy area that fits uh, in, in here. Um, this means the Levy area appears as an operator on, on, the, uh, on the algebra A, uh, and we define it in, uh, in, in the following way. Now assume that you can define Levy area x square. Remember, if you specialize for the free case, you have a, a necessary and sufficient conditions provided by this to, to, to persons in the, uh, okay. Assume that uh, you're working on the condition existence of that, then you can define uh, P, then a polynomial, you can define this as a limit of corrected uh, sums involving, as in the classical case, x and x square. Now this means, I'm just summarizing because the time is almost over, 
given x given the uh, uh, the uh, levy area process in here you can define this quantity here in in general this is a polynomial and this is also a polynomial this is a multiplication in a this is a multiplication in a, for all polynomials p but you can also extend the, the theory and you can also define this quantity here where f and g are some uh, for some some large class of functions uh, yeah, I understand the as functions, f and g, I understand the as functions. You can also define it for the, uh, this integral in, in here uh, for a large class of processes y, okay, for the, the general theory. Uh, this definition, you can solve the, uh, such kind of differential equations in the non commutative setting, and you come to the conclusion that y is also a functional of x and the uh, uh, levy area which I have defined previously in a non commutative setting and then of course you can provide why you can you can get approximation results uh, for the if you expand the function this function here you get exponentiation now for the for the free case uh, you're going to recall results by uh, uh, Bian and, and uh, Speicher or Kummerer and Speicher etc and uh, Bojiko for the, for the free case. Uh, in this case, x is a free bone in motion. You define the stochastic uh, Okay. Now, in this case, it's, it's, it's enough to, to, to give sense to, to, to this uh, quantity here, where uh, x is now the free bone in motion. So now, you can do it, you can refer to, to Bjarn Speicher and uh, use the uh, the definition they, they gave, et cetera, to define uh, x to make a distinction between x2 in the Ito sense for the Ito calculus and the Svatonovich calculus it makes sense. But there is a relationship uh, about this. Okay, let's go for the uh, now. An alter, and here, this is the what you get, what you see in in, in Bian and uh, Speicher's papers. Et but there's an alternative way to define to, to, to define what uh, using this. Uh, uh, Levy area integral in terms of of, uh, of Lebesgue. This is a place where the where we differ from from uh, from uh, Bian and uh, Speicher, and of course you can define Stratonovich etc. And here is a relation between uh, the 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 the, the Levy area in the Stratonovich sense and the connection with the Levy area in the Ito sense. If you sometimes it's better to work in the in the Stratonovich context etc. Okay. Now, the, 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 the theory extends, I mentioned it that the, uh, as being an open question, but the, the theory also extends to uh, the case of uh, two Gaussian processes in the, in the, sense, the, the, in, in the sense of uh, Boje Kumerer. And of, of course, the, the, there is room for improvement for, the, uh, uh, for, 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 for some other Damaholt uh, processes, but the index is in, in here and for smaller gammas in here. Now, as a conclusion, let me just say that the, uh, the main point of the proof relies on such kind of uh, inequality here. You see, Q is an index between minus one and one. Uh, just make care that minus one and one are not in, uh, excluded at this point, okay? Uh, just summarizing a little bit the point where we arrive, etc. And xt is a q on in motion. Remember, if you specialize q, if you put q equal zero, you have the free case. Okay, the free case appear, appears just as an example of the of what's going on in this context. Now, uh, on some some non-commutative probability space here. Now, uh, imagine you have a simple for, for for any simple process. I gave the formulation in for any simple process in A. And this quantity in here, this is a tensor product in here, uh, is just this quantity here, because I have chosen this, this quantity. And then, if on this, this assumption, then you have this inequality norm. You have the infinity norm in here, and you have the, the square in here. You see, the, the, square, the norm of the square in here. This means you have something which is a norm infinity, and because of this bound, this is a, a square norm. Square norm means Levy area. You can reduce the Levy area fits in, okay? Unfortunately, and then of course, you see the, the inequality 
uh, if you take Q to zero, you get exactly the inequality which was known for the free case. This was known. This generalizes for the, for the free case. And there is even a, an additional problem to extend such kind of results for uh, processes which are not simple processes, for, for more complicated processes. Uh, we need something which is, uh, which is similar to that, etc. And, of course, another uh, point of, in this context would be to use uh, Rota and uh, discrete uh, combinatorial approach to stochastic calculus in order to see if we could avoid using such kind of inequality. Okay. Are there question or comment? Please uh, repeat your conclusion about the relation between Ito integral yeah. and Young integral. Is yeah. it the same? Or you get something like this. And one half off. Instead of having the middle of the interval, it's thought this is... This is the way we define the strato. This, that's probably not uniqueness of the, of the way we define. This means the Levy area in the sense of Stratonovich uh, could be related to the Levy variance in the sense when you have Ito calculus. And there is an additional term. We, we added to the, to the E2. Yes, but I'm asking about the relation between Ito and Young integrals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, not Stratonovich. I told you, there's probably not, no uniqueness of the definition. Oh. We use it in this sense because it's convenient to put it in, a, to call it a, like a, the, the, the Levy area, you know, for, for convenience. For the, there is no, for example, by the way, if you, a Levy, Levy area process, if, you, if you're working on a non-Levy area process, usually uh, the Levy area, which comes out in, in the classical case, is something like this, okay? Uh, B1, DB2, minus uh, uh, B2, DB1. You have a symmetric part. For example, in the, for the Heisenberg case and two-dimensional case. Every time you're using the symmetric part in this context. And uh, uh, what Lyons was doing is uh, he used an extension. It's like, it's like, just forgive this. You know, this is part of But you can introduce it from the discussion. You're right. There's no uniqueness. It's just redefined it in this way.